Okay, I'm going to start out reminding you of a couple things from 8.7. You guys took notes over this. We've already tested over it, in fact, and you did pretty well. When we were taking a binomial times a binomial, there's two terms in each set of parentheses. Remember the process was, we called it foiling. You end up with four multiplications. Uh, I'm going to scroll down below here so you can see the foiling, and I'll do an example of it real quick. And the main points for this is going to you're going to take notes over 8.8, .8, which is foiling, but there's some shortcuts you can uh, kind of speed up the process with on certain problems. Okay, you got to multiply what's in the first set of parentheses, this x, times both spots in the second set of parentheses. x times x be an x squared, don't forget your exponent. And x times 4 is, of course, 4x. For your second two multiplications, they come from when you're multiplying the 6 in both your spots. 6 times x, and 6 times 4. Okay, on each one of these, we ended up, if you did it in the same order that I did, your like terms ended up being side by side. They both have an x to the first power, you can go ahead and add them together. So your final answer ended up being x squared plus 10x plus 24. And of all the things we did on our last test, it's what we did probably the best on. So I'm pretty happy with that, and I'm trusting you're going to be able to pick up on what I need you to for 8.8 .8 fairly well. So I'll flip it over to 8.8. .8. They're all going to look similar as we get them set up, but I'm going to try and get you to show your answer without showing any work. If you can't do that, then go ahead and foil it. I'm not going to take off any points for you showing your work. But, when we get into Chapter 9 a little bit more in depth, it's going to help us. Because remember, in Chapter 9, we're doing the reverse of everything. Every problem we learned in Chapter 8, we're doing backwards. So, I have shown you how to do these. One version of it. If you have a binomial and an exponent of 2 on the outside, I just told you the simplest way to learn it first off is just, remember, exponent of 2 just means take this object times itself. So you just took the first set of parentheses, rewrote it once again, and you did your foiling process. So you would do your four multiplications, and you come up with the answer. <clears throat> when you did so, we, of course, had x squared with our first multiplication. Your second and third multiplications always resulted in the exact same numbers. It was 5 times x, and it was x times 5. And your last multiplication ended up being 5 times 5. Combining like terms, just as we did on the previous problem, x squared plus 10x plus 25 ended up being your final answer. My pen's kind of lagging behind, so handwriting's getting worse. Okay. If you're doing a problem like this, and we refer to this as a binomial squared, whether it's set up with the parentheses and exponent of 2, or whether it's set up as actually just two sets of parentheses and they have to be both identical to each other, the same thing kept happening to us. We'd always have repeated terms in the middle, and we'd combine like terms. So instead of doing that, when you're adding something to itself, it's the same concept as multiplying it by 2. So... Some of you guys picked up on this and didn't show your work on this, and I kind of knew where you were coming from without even showing. So, the x squared comes from the first spot in the parentheses squared. Obviously, the first spot in your parentheses was just the x. So, you took this piece, and that was your first location, and you squared it. This bold typing I have down here is kind of what you're going to use as your shortcut. And most people understood that your 5... Taking it times itself is the same thing as squaring it. So your first spot and your last spot were fairly obvious. And even people that got the answer wrong, sometimes they just wrote down x squared plus 25. They forgot the whole process. But the important thing is to come up with the, you're going to end up with a trinomial in your answer by combining those middle terms. Middle terms always repeated themselves, so I said it's the same concept of taking it times 2. So this one you take your 5 times your x, and I usually just say you double it. You're taking your 2 times your second term times your first term. 2 times 5 times x is how we can get 10x without showing any work. I know this sounds a little more complicated than it actually is. You'll see it when I do another example or two. 
how this can work out and get to the answer pretty quick on some problems. Oh, I don't have any ones hand typed on here, do I? I was going to write some in. So, using this shortcut, I'll make up a problem and I'll try and show you how we can work it. Maybe the problem ends up being x plus 11 quantity squared. It could be written that way, or it could actually be written as x plus 11 times x plus 11. Either way, if you were doing your foiling, you would come up with a x squared, and you would come up with two of your 11x's, and then 11 times 11 is 121. So eventually, after seeing a few of these, you're going to just go straight to the answer, x squared, and you're going to take 11 times x, and you're going to double it for 22. And 11 squared is where your 11 times 11 comes from. So the first spot squared, the last spot squared, but leave a gap in the middle, and you can fill it in with what do you get when you multiply them, and then double it. Take these two spots times each other and double it gives you 22x in the center. Okay, one more of those I'll show you, then I'll move on to something called difference of squares. If you look at one more, and I'll put a coefficient on the first term, just because it's about the most complicated version you can see. What if I asked you what is uh, 3x minus 7 quantity squared? Okay, if you're going to get quick at this, recognize that you're going to take this first location, the 3x, and you're going to take it and square it. So 3x times 3x gives you... 9x squared. You're going to take your last spot and square it. So this is a 7 or negative 7. I would really prefer you thought of it. Negative 7 times negative 7 is a positive 49. Okay, and it's all about you coming up with what goes in the center here uh, quickly. If you take 3 times negative 7 and double it, so 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. You double that, you get negative 42. And, of course, you're going to need that x attached to it. So 9x squared minus 42x plus 49. If we get into this and get to an assignment or whiteboards later, if you don't feel comfortable with it, I'm okay with you just showing your work. Write it down twice, fold it out. You're at the same answer. This just might save you once you get good at it. 10 seconds per problem or so. The biggest benefit is in Chapter 9, when we start reversing it, this will help you a little bit recognizing which method we're going to use. So, there's one more method on this set of notes we're going to be going, and then you'll get into some whiteboards. So, difference of squares. The reason it's called that is because your result and your answers is going to be two perfect squares subtracted from each other. Subtracting meaning difference. So, if you go ahead and FOIL these out, four multiplications, first two give you x squared minus 5x. Your third and four, fourth multiplication give you a plus 5x and a minus 25. Okay, these parentheses are identical to each other except one has a plus sign, one has a minus sign. We practiced some of these or some of these on the test as I just wasn't referring to the shortcut back in chapter 8. But when you started adding these together, it happened repeatedly to you, and some of you guys might have started recognizing it. You're going to have a negative 5x, you're going to have a positive 5x, they're going to cancel each other out, you're going to have zero x's in the middle. So when you went to combine like terms, you're, you just got x squared, zero x's in the middle, and then your minus 25 on the end. So when you FOIL it out, you did four multiplications, you still really only ended up with a binomial. That was called a difference of squares. This spot's a perfect square, the second spot's a perfect square, and there's a subtraction sign between them. Okay. If you recognize that's how the problem's set up, identical sets of parentheses except for their sign, you can just square the first spot, put a subtraction sign, and square the second spot, and you have an answer in a matter of seconds. So I'll show you a couple of those and 
then we can go on the whiteboards. What if the problem is originally a 2x plus 5 and a 2x minus 5 being multiplied? And by the way, I know what happened in the first one. The subtraction doesn't have to be in the second set of parentheses. It doesn't really matter. This could be the subtraction. That could be the addition. Your answer is not going to be affected by that. If you recognize my parentheses are identical to each other except for a plus sign and a minus sign, you can go quickly straight to your answer. Square the first spot, which is your 2x. If you take 2x and multiply it times itself, you're going to get 4x squared. My pen is really lagging behind on me. need to charge it. Okay, then all you got to do is look at your second spot which is your 5, and you're going to square it. And each time, it'll never fail, there's always a subtraction sign here. Because really it comes from a 5 times a negative 5 if you were doing the foiling method. Okay. That's one way you can get out of just showing your work. You know you're, if you did the foiling, you get a 10x, and you get a negative 10x with your two middle multiplications. So and they're just going to cancel each other out. Zero x is in the middle. That's why it's only a binomial instead of a trinomial like all the other problems we had. Okay, maybe let's try one with some slightly larger numbers. What it is, 11x minus 8 times 11x plus 8. If your parentheses are identical, except for the sign, use this new method. If your parentheses are perfectly identical, including the sign, you got to use the method we just got finished with. I already did 11 times 11 above. That's how you're going to start out with the first location squared. So this location right here, squared. 11x times 11x is 121x squared. Always going to be a subtraction sign, and you're going to square the second spot. And you get a 64 with 8 times 8. First quantity squared minus second quantity squared. And it can be right to the answer. And you're going to be good at it. Okay. We're going to practice on whiteboards. And you're going to get real good. And we're going to move on from that back into some chapter 9.